Well, hi again for USCFSales.com. This is Steve Lopez with another Fritz tip for you today. Last time around in video number 19, we discussed the basics of the new Let's Check feature in Fritz 13, an online server that stores analysis of hundreds, thousands even, of users from around the world that you can call up with just a click of a mouse. You can bring up other people's analysis very easily. If you've not watched video 19 yet, now I realize it's a long video. It's about three minutes shorter than Ben or her. It's about a 17 minute video. It's a long video, but there are basic concepts in that video that you're going to need to know to understand how and why Let's Check works the way it does. Primarily the idea of discovering a position. You'll hear that again and again and again as we go through the Let's Check features. This time around we're going to look at a basic Let's Check analysis feature. What I've got up on the screen at this point is an old Richard Rady game from 1922. I'm a big Richard Rady fan and I want to have this game analyzed by other people. In other words, if someone has already analyzed this game use and, and stored that analysis on the Let's Check server, this game can actually be analyzed in a matter of seconds. Now, as we've seen in previous videos, if you use analysis features such as full analysis or blunder check, it can take hours to analyze a game if you do it locally on your own computer. With the Let's Check Analysis feature, you have the option to be able to take advantage of other people's analyses that they have stored on the Let's Check server. That's what we're going to look at here. Of course, we have the screen here. What we do is we go up to the Analysis menu, as we see here. You'll see about halfway across that ribbon. In fact, right about here, you'll see a uh, button that says Let's Check Analysis. And when you move your mouse over it, you get a mouse pop-up that says analyze the full game with variations from let's check very simple what it allows you to do is either analyze variations uh, basically with existing information from the server or contribute your own analysis to the server when you click on this button you get a pop-up like this uh, it's a dialogue that allows you to set different features we're going to look at just the dialogue just to zoom in on it make it a little easier to concentrate on it you have three different kinds of analysis available to you I'm going to mention one of them briefly it's not the one we're going to look at in this video but it's one called win variations we need to discuss a concept of let's check we've already discovered uh, how to discover a variation in Let's Check. If you're the first user to analyze a position to a great depth, usually 20, 21, 22, 23 plies deep, you will be credited as the discoverer of that position and your analysis will go up online. And even if that analysis is superseded by someone else's, your name will still be a part of that position, will still be attached to it. To win a variation, basically what it means is if a, ver if, a, if a position has already been discovered or analyzed and there is already analysis attached to that position, if you analyze, you take your chess engine and analyze that position to a much greater depth than the previous people have done, you will win or conquer that position. The, the two terms are used kind of interchangeably, conquer or win. Now one of these features we're going to look at at a later time allows you to win variations. It will only put your, your analysis up if you have won, if you have an, analyzed it to a much deeper depth than anybody else. There's a standard analysis. What it does, it pulls in. That's the, the second feature here you can see, standard analysis. What that does, if you select that, and we're going to look at that at another time as well, what that will do is pull in any existing analysis and contribute your analysis on positions that have not yet been analyzed by anyone else. But what I want to look at here is retrieval only. What that does, very simply, is your chess engine does not even enter into this at all. You're going to take a game, in this case that Richard Rady game that we were looking at right here. We're going to take that game and we're going to go out onto the Let's Chess server, Let's Check server rather, and we're going to pull up any information that is on that server 
that is connected to any of the positions in this game. This position, this game has 53 positions, 26 moves plus a 127th. So there are 52 positions up through move 26 plus one extra one. So there are 53 positions in this game. If any or all of those positions have already been analyzed by other users, the chess engine, Fritz 13, that I have loaded won't even kick in at all. All it's going to do is pull up any information that is out there and pop it into the game score of this game. So the time settings don't matter. You don't have to fool with them at all. There are two other settings, however, when you use retrieval only which is include text comments. One of the features of Let's Check is you can actually type in commentary, whether it be simply a game citation, the player names that a particular position or from the game that that particular position was taken from. You could type in, let's say, just the name of variation, Roy Lopez exchange variation at some point. Or you can actually type in actual commentary, actual analysis. This is what's going on in this position. White has an isolated deep on and black needs to do this, blah, blah, blah. You can type all that in as well. Any of those text comments will be pulled in to your game score if you have include text comments checked. Also, usernames. If it does pull in any variations, any commentary from the Let's Check server, the username the originating user, where that analysis or commentary came from, will be brought into your game score as well, so you see exactly whose commentary that was. So we're going to set it for retrieval only. Time doesn't matter. We'll go for text comments and usernames as well, and when we're ready, we will click OK. Now I'm going to show you how quickly this happens. What I'm actually doing is cobbling together a video here. I have a separate clip of this game being analyzed, and it's going to blow your mind because this entire analysis process takes place in less than 30 seconds. We're going to take this game, this Richard Grady game, that is 26, 27 moves long, actually 53 individual positions, and it's going to be analyzed in under a minute. And that's what we're going to show you here. All you have to do to start the process, as we've seen, is go to Let's Check Analysis, pull up this dialog, select Retrieval Only, click OK, and watch what happens. If you were timing that, it took about 16 seconds to come up with this analysis. In other words, instead of taking this game and having your own Fritz 13 analyze it overnight, possibly for an hour, two hours, or more, in less than 30 seconds, we have complete analysis of this game. Now, what do we see here? We see that the first eight moves, for example, are all book moves. They weren't analyzed. They were pulled right out of an online opening book. But starting with move nine, we start to get analysis of each move. And what we see here for the actual move, what was actually played in the game, is we see a score, always given from White's viewpoint, by the way. So if it's a negative number, as we see down here for the position, the alternate position at White's 11th move, we see that black is ahead by five one-hundredths of a pawn. Down here we see black is ahead by one one hundredth of a pawn. So if it is a positive number, it means a white advantage. A negative number means a black advantage. Here we see after move nine, white is ahead by eighteen hundredths of a pawn. The move after the slash is the search depth that the engine in question reached to make that determination on a positional valuation. This engine went twenty-three plies, twenty-three half moves, in other words, eleven and a half moves deep. 23 half moves, 23 plies deep to come up with that analysis. Notice that for the moves where we do have a variation listed, for example, black's ninth move, E takes D4, white is 18 hundredths of a pawn ahead after 16 ply search depth. Notice that another engine has come in and discovered that E takes D4 is indeed the best move according to that engine's analysis and that after E takes D4 in reply, white would be ahead by 18 hundredths of a pawn, 23 ply search depth, and we have the name of the engine that came up with that analysis. If we jump down here, we find names of engines, 
and usernames. These are play chess nicknames, usernames of the people whose engines, computers generated that analysis. So that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at a actual move, a variation, which may actually agree. They may be the same move. Uh, we see up to three half moves listed along with an evaluation. For example, here black has played knight c5, which actually was the best move. Had queen c2 and a5 been played instead of what actually came in the game later, would have been a dead even position. And it was discovered by this engine from this user after a 22 ply search depth. That's what that means. At the top here, this is a really interesting piece of information. <coughs> Excuse me. We have engine game correlation. What that means is how much the engines agree with the moves that were actually played in the game. Notice that white, in white's case, about a quarter of the time, 23%, roughly a quarter of the time, white has played the right moves in the estimation of the various engines that have analyzed this game, whereas black has made the correct moves almost two-thirds of the time three-fifths really 59 percent just one percent shy of 60 percent three-fifths of the time black has made the correct moves not surprising being as Richard Grady won this game he was playing the black pieces so this is an interesting little statistic up here that you get when you just pull information in right off the server what you see is the percentage of agreement between what the engines think and what were actually played in the game also notice, if you go back and look at this video again, during that less than 30 seconds, it was actually about 16 or 17 seconds it took to pull all this information in. Fritz, my Fritz 13 never once kicked in. It never played into this at all. This is all existing analysis that was from the Let's Check server. And going back and looking at the video, I forgot to mention this, when you click OK to start this process, what you will see is the Let's Check server will look at that game and make two passes through the game. It will start at the end of the game, work backwards, drop in any analysis that it finds, then it will go back through it a second time just to double check to make sure it didn't miss any analysis. And when it's done, as we saw it only takes a few seconds, this is what you get. You get other people's analysis done by their chess engines and often a variety of engines as we see here. We've actually got I think five, if, unless I miscounted, there are actually five different chess engines that have contributed analysis and we get a percentage of agreement between the engines and the actual moves of the game. We get evaluations of every move in the game as to who's ahead, who's behind, and by how much and it took less than 30 seconds to get this analysis. Now you won't see this with every game. If you use retrieval on one of your games possibly on another Grandmaster or Master game, you may not get every single move with analysis. But over time, there will be more and more and more games. As more games, as more positions are analyzed by users on the Play Chess uh, server, on the Let's Check server, as more and more and more positions are analyzed, you'll have a higher and higher percentage of retrieval pulling in information for every move in a game. What it requires is everybody participating. So if you have Fritz 13, if you purchased it, I encourage you to use this feature. I encourage you to contribute your analysis to the Let's Check server for everybody to use so that we can all save time when we're analyzing games. The more people participate, the more people contribute, the better this feature is going to work. There are a ton of features in this particular aspect of Fritz 13. Let's Check is a major, major, major upgrade to this software. There are a ton of features. In fact, we may not even do videos on all of them. There's so much here. It's almost like a whole separate sub-program within the Fritz 13 program. But well, we are going to hit on the major things, and we will look at another one of these next week in our next Fritz 13 video. Until then, for USCFSales.com, I'm Steve Lopez. Thank you for watching.